Egypt's government and Al-Azhar are wrestling each other over control of the country's religious affairs. Its parliament has just narrowly voted down a bill that aimed to strip the country's highest religious authority from control over its most important institution, Dar al ifta It would have meant that decisions and rulings made on all aspects of religious life for more than 90 million Egyptian Muslims would have been placed under the jurisdiction of Egypt's president, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. So what exactly is Dar al ifta and why would the law have spelt the demise of one of the world's oldest academic bodies? Dar al ifta issues religious edicts for Muslims in Egypt, as well as across the Islamic world. This includes everyday rulings over Muslim life, but also policy decisions like marriage laws, inheritance, and finance. It also has the power to ratify or reject death sentences passed in Egypt's courts. It's always been under the control of Al-Azhar University, an academic and religious institution regarded as the highest seat of learning in the Sunni Islamic world. However, under the bill, Dar al-Ifta would have become a separate body to Al-Azhar and fall under the government's remit of power. It would have its own budget, be exempt from taxes, and for the first time in Egypt's history, its top jurist, the Grand Mufti, would be appointed by the president himself. Al-Azhar strongly rejected the bill, calling it an attack on its autonomy. Many of its figures said the move undercut any significance of Al-Azhar as a religious body, while also politicizing the role of religion in the country, by putting the power of religious rulings in the hands of the government. The bill passed its first two readings in parliament before being narrowly voted down in August. It's the latest point of tension in what is becoming a difficult relationship between Al-Azhar and the Egyptian state, since Abdel Fattah al-Sisi assumed control of Egypt through a military coup in 2013. The current Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Ahmad al-Tayyib, initially supported the army's takeover, standing alongside then Defense Minister Sisi during his infamous televised address when he announced the removal of Egypt's elected President Mohamed Morsi. But when armed forces attacked and killed more than a thousand pro-Morsi protesters in Rabah Square, Al-Tayyib distanced himself from the military and publicly condemned the massacre. <laughs> لم يكن يعلم بإجراءات فض الاعتصام إلا من طريق مسائل الإعلام صباح اليوم ويعلن الأزهر أسفه وحزنه لعدد من الضحايا صباح اليوم أعلن للكافة في هذا الجو أنني قد أجد نفسي مضطرا لأن أعتكف في بيت حتى يتحمل الجميع when Sisi became president of Egypt, he was accused of purging government institutions of senior generals, judges and public prosecutors not loyal to him and his allies. Al-Tayyib, as the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, was safe. His role was protected by Egypt's constitution. He was also on good terms with the UAE, Sisi's regional ally, and seen as an important counterweight to the influence of Salafi movements both within Egypt and across the Muslim world. But Sisi wasn't content with this. He challenged Al-Tayyib openly, blaming him for failing to reform aspects of orthodox Islamic jurisprudence and Al-Azhar for directly influencing the ideologies of extremist groups in the region. <laughs> للقلق وللخطر والقتل والتدمير في الدنيا كلها مش ممكن يكون الفكر ده أنا مش بقول الدين أنا بقول الفكر ده اللي تم تقديسه نصوص وأفكار تم تقديسها على مئات السنين وأصبح الخروج عليها صعب قوي وأنا بكلم بقول تاني إحنا محتاجين صورة دينية جديد هذا ليس تجديدا هذا إهمال وترك وإعلان يعني الفرقة أرجوكم Al-Tayyib's outspoken opposition to Sisi's narrative on religious affairs would put him in the crosshairs, and he was often targeted by media outlets with close ties to the government. While Sisi didn't have the power to remove Al-Tayyib from his post, he dismissed many of his trusted aides, including Sheikh Abbas Shoman and Al-Azhar's former legal advisor, Muhammad Abdus Salam. In 2018, several MPs drafted a law to curb Al-Tayyib's authority as the head of Al-Azhar. The proposed law aimed to limit his term to eight years, 
as well as bring in external specialists into the institution's top bodies, namely the Supreme Council, the Council of Senior Scholars and the Islamic Research Academy. <laughs> Al-Azhar is one of the last independent bodies in Egypt, but it's one viewed by Egypt's president as a direct obstacle to his vision for a new religious paradigm in the Muslim world. But could a rivalry between the country's most powerful man and its most powerful religious figure spell the end of one of the world's most important Islamic institutions?